Hi card making friends, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today I'm going to remake a Remembrance Day card using Cindy Lou's Poppies. I'm using my Misty. I have a half a sheet of Hammer Mill white cardstock. This is a 100 pound and I really like to use this for Copic coloring and that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to load all of the pieces of this stamp set in and I color all of them uh, for the card today. And you also need an additional four of the large leaves and three, four of the small ones as well. Okay, moving on to the coloring, we're going to be using R20, R24, R46, and R59 for our reds, for our greens, G21, G24, and G28. I'm going to do for the flower, the dark to the light technique this time. Starting with the dark ink, which is the R59, I'm adding the darkest highlights into each petal. And work on one petal at a time. It makes it a lot easier to color these. From the bottom, I'm slowly adding a few flicks. I'm going to the next color, which is R46, and I'm adding additional lines beside where the first one was, but also overlapping the darkest one that I just put in, and again with some more flicks. And we're working our way up the petal to the lighter colors. R24 this time, again moving over a little bit and filling in a little bit more of the space, but you do want to leave some white space. That helps to add to the depth of the petals. Okay, and the final one is R20. This is our lightest color, but it's also our blending tool. So you see, as I'm coloring it in, I'm also blending it. Now to get a nice blend, I like to go over this a second time, starting again with a dark color, the R59, and I'm adding my deepest shadows and my outline, some flicks along the bottom, coming back in with R46, doing that second level, beside the dark ones, flicking again. Third color, the R24, coming back in, adding the lighter color, and then finishing off with the R20, again, the lightest color and also my blending tool. And after you get to the second, you get the paper quite saturated and it blends really nicely and with the dark highlights in there, you get some depth in, in the petal. I'm going to do the second petal the same way, starting with the R59, putting in my deepest shadows and doing some flicking from the bottom. Then I'm coming in with R46. I think I accidentally grab R24 here and I realize it about halfway through. <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to continue on adding the color and we will just come back over that with the R46. Here we go. Adding some more flicks. Some more depth. Back in with the R24 and putting it in the correct places. So you're moving over a little bit each time when you add the lighter color and that's how you're helping to fill in that flower. Okay, and then R20 is my final. It's the pink, so my lightest highlight, and also blending. Again, going back over top of that again, starting with a dark color, the R59, adding my deep shadows in, and any of the rolls that I think I need in my petals. Okay, coming back in with R46. adding that second layer and you go over top of the previous layer, the darker one. And as you're getting lighter, you do the same thing. And that also helps to blend it all in. I decided at this point that I have a little bit too much of the pink. So I am pulling that R24 a little bit more into the lighter colors. Okay. Cause these are actually red poppies, not pink ones. <laughs> And there you go, there is a whole flower finished. And so you're going to go around and you're going to do the same thing with each of the other flowers, doing one petal at a time. So I'm just giving you a close up here of what it looks like. And next we're going to do a leaf. Oh, I'm gonna add the jelly roll. Okay, so jelly roll number 10 from Secura 
and I'm going over top of where those pink highlights are, just adding a little bit more highlight with my white gel pen. Okay, now we're moving on to the leaf. So again, we're using G21, G24, and G28. I'm going to do the reverse this time. I'm going to flood the leaf with my lightest color, which is my G21. And there is no right or wrong way to do your Copic coloring. You can start with a dark or you can start with a light. It's entirely up to you. I find when I am building shadows, like on the flower, it's easier to do the darker color first, but when I'm blending a leaf where I don't want the dark color to take over, it's easier for me to blend the colors if I have already filled in the lightest color. It seems to just help move the ink around a little bit more. Okay, so I've added the other two greens. Now I'm coming back in with my lightest, my G21, going over top of it, and blending all the colors together. And I'm only going to do one of each because it's very repetitious. So you're just going to work your way through and you're going to do all of the pieces because you need them all for this card. Okay, so we're finished. We're getting that jelly pen back out again. I'm going into the centers. I have filled in the centers with black ink and I'm coming back over with the white gel pen to add the highlights. And this really, really, really brings these poppies to life. So don't, don't skip this step. So the center of the two big Lee uh, flowers and then down the middle of that one that's not quite open yet and flicking over the third flower and I'm not going to do anything to the leaves. Okay, and so basically you're just putting a little dash where each of the pink is in each of the petals. It's really quite simple, but you want to go with the grain of the petal as well in the same direction. And that's why I keep turning the paper. Because I'm really good at flicking one way. I'm not very good at flicking another way. I find it easier to move the paper than to distort my wrist. Okay, so then we're going to take the coordinating dies and we are going to cut all these little guys out. So I stacked them the way I think I would like them and I'm coming in with some press and seal. This is sticky on one side. You're going to press down on all of your pieces and make sure they're secure and then you can pick the entire thing up. So you've already additioned where you want the pieces. You like where you want the pieces. This is a great way to hold on to them. For making the card base, I have seven and a half by eight and three quarters scored at three and three quarters. I have a black card front, three and three quarters by eight and three quarters. I have a white one that is die cut with a slimline nested stitched die set. And this one started at three and three quarters by eight and three quarters and I broke it down. And then the card front that I'm now working on is three and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth. And that fits really nicely inside the stitched edge of that slimline uh, card front that I created. So I'm going to do a background ink blending and this is done with distressed oxides. As you can see, I'm using black soot, iced spruce, speckled egg and tumbled glass. So the reason for these colors is I want a blue sky at the top that is kind of um, hopeful. Whereas down the bottom of the card is kind of the memory of Remembrance Day and um, you know the sorrow and the darkness. And then from that background, we're going to have the beautiful red poppies springing forth as they do in Flounders Fields. Okay, so I'm just coming through with my third color, Iced Spruce. And you'll see that it's quite blotchy. I'm not worrying about it. I am a firm believer of doing a couple of layers uh, lightly instead of one heavy layer. I find that it blends a lot nicer. And don't uh, put your fingers on the part that you have already blended because your oil gets into the ink and it does leave marks, especially if you really warm oily fingers like I do. Okay, and I'm using a small brush for the black. I couldn't find my big one. It blends a lot easier if you use a big one. Just a heads up there. Okay, so coming back over with my second layer of ice spruce and this is where I pull the color down so that it blends with the darker color below it. 
coming back up to speckled egg and I'm doing the same thing. I'm blending close to the line so that it overlaps with the iced spruce. And these are all opaque, so you'll find that they will cover each other if you let them. So finally, the lighter color at the top is again tumbled glass. And I'm just blending that in. Okay, and I'm going to be adding some splatter to this, so I'm really not too worried about how well it's blended. Also, the flowers cover an awful lot, uh, so there's a lot of forgiveness there. Splatter, we're going to be using some Gansa Tambi. I'm using the gold in that one, and then I have a bottle of just white acrylic that I'm going to dilute with a whole bunch of water so that I can splat it. And I have my card front in my splat box because my computer has enough paint on it already. I did a splatting, uh, I don't know, a year ago and I forgot to use the splat box. I got it all over my keyboard and all over my monitor. And um, it's still there because it's very hard to clean up. Okay, so I've done the white. Now I'm just cleaning my paintbrush, coming back in with some white, or some gold, sorry. And I'm checking my splatter and adding a bunch of splatter. Okay, and then we're going to set that aside to dry before we start layering the card. Layering the card, I have the black onto the card front. I'm using some foam tape on the back of the art piece that I've already peeled off the cover and making sure that the card's opening the right way because you want the black at the bottom. I am layering a card. Okay, so now we're ready to go back in and audition these flowers. I want to put a sentiment at the bottom. I have a couple of sentiments here. Uh, this one is thinking of you. This second one is from Spring Garden. And I kind of like this one. It says, where flowers bloom, so does hope. And I think that's a really good sentiment for this card today. So I'm just kind of seeing if it works in there okay, and it does. So I'm going to bring my Misty back in. I'm going to put my entire finished card into my Misty, hold it down with a magnet or two, and then I'm going to position my stamp in the bottom right-hand corner. And I push this up in just a sec. There you go. So we're not out of screen. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure that it's straight. I'm using Versamark ink and my little bunny to get rid of any of my little fingerprints. Versamark ink, give it a good stamp, and then I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamps Detailed Gold Embossing Powder, and I just got a brand new container. Actually, I got five. I haven't put them into my little plastic bins yet, so we do it the old way on folded paper. That way it's easy to get back in the bottle. Okay, Fold that paper closed before you bring in your heat tool so that you don't blow the excess all over the place. And you're just going to heat set this little guy. And because it's on, on the black soot down at the bottom, it is going to show up quite nicely. Okay, so we are ready to add our flowers. I'm going to take some of these squares. These are foam squares. I've cut them in half and I'm adding them to the back of my flowers. And I have gotten rid of all of the release paper and I'm using my plastic wrap to pick up the whole thing and place it down on top of my card. A couple of the leaves escaped and that's no biggie. Just grab your glue and glue them up and pop them in. Okay, and I've got the little ones going on at the bottom and then some big ones at the top because I'm trying to stretch this out so it looks like it's uniform on a slimline card. Okay, and just adding a couple of foam squares to the back of this one big one that I'm going to tuck right under there. There we go. There's my pretty finished card. Everything I used today is listed below this video. There's links to the stores uh, where you can see and purchase them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing and ring that bell. You'll get notified the next time that we add a video. Thank you so much for stopping in and until next time, doodles.